Willie, would you stand? He's our president of SCORE. What we do all the time, every single week, we have like five workshops going on almost every week, is uh, Lolita over here. Wait, Lolita. Do you care to say anything, Lolita? You, uh, you care. She loves speaking. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I know I saw a few familiar faces. That was nice after two and a half years. And I just want to say this is our first time trying to have an in-person meeting. So you guys are going to be our test. And we're going to see how well this goes on. So I want to thank all of you for coming. And I want to thank HCC for helping us, the technical support people, Ravi and everybody else. And those of you who are students, Please remember, we are there for you when you start your business, when you grow your business, and what you want to do. And those of you who are in fashion, you are in the best hands with these people. They know what they are doing. And because they are experts on not only this, working with a group, how to market your group, how to set up your business, everything. So go to our website, houston.score.org, and ask for a mentor. And that would be your best way because we are there for the life of your business and we hope to see you in other workshops. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Richard Stanley. Uh, I've been a member of uh, Volunteer Score for 16 plus years. Uh, I retired from a business, a full service printing business and wanted to know what could I do to give back to the community. And that's the basic reason that we have close to 200 volunteers at our Houston chapter giving back of their time to help you all succeed in business. Our number one goal, can anyone guess what it is? Help you succeed. The word is success. <laughs> yes, we want you to be successful, and that's what we strive to. Basically saving two things. What are the most two important things when you're developing a business? What do you want to conserve? What are the two things you have to have? Time and money. Excellent. Sorry, you read my notes, haven't you? That's great. Yes. We help conserve the startup money. We help conserve the money as you go along. And time is worth money. And so we help you by helping you organize through one thing, and that's called the business plan. Every new startup should have a business plan. And that's one of the things that almost every one of our close to 200 volunteers are good at and helping. We do a lot of co-mentoring because none of us have the expertise in every discipline. We have lawyers, we have CPAs, we have HR people. It's all available to you at no charge. All our mentoring is free. However, there are two caveats to this. We do not practice law. Okay? We can review contracts. We can't create them or write them. We do not do tax accounting. I'm sure you all know why. That's the IRS, three, three, three different IRS calls with two different answers, right? So we, we stay away from tax accounting. I'd like to call your attention to the board, the whiteboard, some information that I want to I review with you. Uh, last year, our chapter alone, there's 300 chapters in the United States. We are the second largest. We, Houston volunteers, helped start 833 new businesses, which created 3,487 total jobs. We love those figures, and we continue to do that. And now, with Willie's president uh, guidance, we have grown by at least 50 more members than we did last year under his leadership. There are 17 different languages spoken in SCORE. Willie is the exception. He speaks seven different languages. Eight so and a half. If you have friends, eight, eight and a half. Eight and a half. What's the half? <laughs> English. <laughs> um, we're also going to hear from Jerry Hoffman and Jim Davis. Uh, Jerry Hoffman is a designer and custom clothier manufacturer, and Jim Davis, executive level buyer for several major department stores. Um, uh, of not only what, and they're going to teach you not only what fashion trends are today, but also the underlying reason of why the trends are what they are. 
Combined, Jerry and Jim have over 80 years of fashion design, manufacturing, sourcing, distribu and distributing of merchandise in retail sales. So they're available to you. I've posted the three, the four of how to contact us, and it's all uh, first name dot last name at scorevolunteer.org. You can reach any one of us through that way, or you can call us, as Lisa said, the main office, and we will assign you uh, to a mentor. Be clear on what you're trying, what you're trying to start, because we try and align our mentor's expertise with what business you're trying to go into. On the lower right hand corner in green, as bold as I could make it, I want to emphasize, because sometimes you hear it, but you forget it because we'll, we're delivering a lot of information today. It's always free mentoring. Always free, and you can do it as often as you like. There is no limit on how many times it could have. I have a client that's been with me now for 14 years, and you'll hear her success story in a moment. <laughs> oh. I've got a couple of uh, success stories. Uh, last year and the year before, I had one. This year, I've got another one who just happened uh, to have an unbelievable success story. Uh, she calls herself a purse-aholic. Can you guess what product she's manufacturing? Yeah. Um, I asked Jim Davis to join me on this one because she was having some manufacturing difficulties and quality control. And Jim is an expert on that because as a buyer for major department stores, it's his responsibility to correct and return uh, merchandise that was faulty and had to correct it. So Jim helped me with her. Um, she is uh, employed as a change management expert for a Fortune 50 business and working from the island of Bali remotely. Uh, as she was there, she recognized the abundant a native labor that was very talented with, with doing things with their hands with cane. Um, you're probably wondering, well, how did she start a business and what she's doing in Bali for two and a half years? Does anybody know why she's in Bali? And she was making a nice living working for this Fortune 50 company. Why would you want to go to Bali? In, this is a, a single American woman. Why would you want to go to Bali? Well, uh, what I know about Bali is that. Uh, the weather is nice, it's cheaper than the United States, and uh, it's a uh, good, uh, it's a really attractive touristic platform. There's a lot of tourists going to Bali and stuff like that. So What's the one thing they're known for that is all year round? And that is scuba diving. This was her passion. She is a master scuba diver, and therefore she went to Bali to learn, become a master diver, and she stayed there for two and a half years. Her name is Jennifer Jones, and I have put her website up here because I think you'll find when you see what, what she is doing, making a very nice living, you'll want to go to her website and, and, and talk with her. She, I think, is she here today? She was going to try and come here uh, and stay after our session, after our panel discussion, so you could meet her and pick her brain, if you will, on how she did what she did. Earlier this month, she attended the Round Tops Antique Show. How many of you have been to Round Top? Oh my gosh. There are hundreds and hundreds of vendors, and it's a 15 day event. It's just marvelous. Um, she sold out her entire inventory. Uh, her sales were $35,000 at a significant profit margin. How did she do it? Well, it's show time. Uh, I thought instead of just telling you about what, how she succeeded, Showing you, I think especially the ladies will enjoy seeing this, her number one seller, and it's amazing the quality that's coming out of the island. And she made it in two different colors. This is the one that sold out immediately. Does anyone want to guess the price on this? Ladies, you know, come on. 20 bucks. 25. $265 and she sold out. Wow. Okay? Um, she also explained to me this evening when I met with her that there's some knockoffs around one of the stores and she went in to look at the knockoff 
she said you wouldn't believe the quality they're selling for. And it was under $50 for a knockoff of this. Quality is what you're paying for. She also, because they do a lot of cane work, she built a little basket lot. And her newest thing, which I think is going to be a huge seller, is a three-way. She has one with a belt on it so that you can actually put it on your belt. It has credit, uh, credit card inserts, and it's just an incredible line. Anyway, she is uh, going to try. She's been doing business uh, B to B to C, business to consumer, for all these years online. And how she did it uh, is 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 amazing uh, for someone that is had no experience with with that. Uh, to develop a line, increase it. Now she has a problem with production, meaning she can't get enough. So she's going to the Java, the island near Bali, to find more tribes to make this. So she's really helping third world countries, if you will, to get, get employment and uh, make a nice living. She was going to be here. Maybe she's going to be a little late because she is dealing with Bali time, which is different than our time. My next success story um, is really an amazing one, too. Uh, this woman uh, worked for a Fortune 500 in HR. She knew nothing about running a business. However, she loved fashion. So she started with a trunk show. And you're going to hear later from Jerry, who, if you read the marketing material, said you can start a business for $3,000, an online business. That's pretty minimal, as most of you know. It normally costs many thousands of dollars if you bring in inventory. This is an inventory-free way of doing business. When we talked about the life of your business, she's been my client since 2007. Uh, our last session that we had was actually last week, and we're getting an update on how, how well she's doing. It's 15 years ago. We talked about the life of the business. We will support you as long as you need our help. And it's free. Richard, do me a favor and speak up. All of a sudden, I think there's an air conditioner in this wall. And people are having a hard time here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Carrie Tate uh, Barkley is the name of the owner. Um, she opened her first store, as I mentioned, 14, 15 years ago. After only two years in business, she opened her second store. And after five years, she opened her third store. And last year, she opened her fourth store uh, in, in, uh, in the Woodlands, right when the pandemic, pandemic started. So guess what happened? She had to close that store. She closed all four stores temporarily. But she kept 95% of her employees employed during the entire time getting the, 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 the loans from the government they offer to help this as keep started. Uh, she's very, very successful today. Uh, she's back to profitability. Uh, this year, she's approaching uh, $5 million in sales out of three stores. Very successful. And her uh, uh, Website is listed there as well. It's frenchcup.com. I suggest you, if you don't have a chance to visit one of her three stores, either at Town and Country or, or on uh, Woodway, um, or the main one on Bel Air, um, right over the railroad tracks, you will see a totally different feel in store when you walk in with chandeliers. Uh, the layout is open, it's very free. And she trains her people. Of course, coming from HR, you know that her success in, in hiring the right people is excellent. Her people are so user friendly. There's no pressure she puts on when you walk in the store. They're very friendly and they're available to you. You can learn a lot from going to one of her stores and just browsing and talking with the people there. Thank you. Ah, Our next speaker is Jerry Hoffman. Um, he is the manufacturer. Sorry. Jerry is the manufacturer, a member of our team. He started with men's sweaters made out of lamb's wool, cashmere, 
we're going to introduce uh, our fashion uh, at fashion at HCC first. I'm too sorry, I thought I just put it on the Oh, list. yes. Thank you. Robbie. Yeah, well, <laughs> Awesome. Would you like to say a few words from the outside? Richard, absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh, actually, I'd love to just, uh, since when we asked that question earlier about how many are in the fashion program, and a few hands uh, kind of uh, uh, were raised, uh, I'd love all of you to know and meet our uh, fashion uh, chair uh, at HCC. And Andrea, just share a little bit about you and, and the program uh, as a way of us just Letting the students know that we've got a program. We're obviously uh, very uh, active in the central campus. We'd love for Southwest uh, Houston to also be aware. So Andrea, I'll pass it to you. And uh, just for the live stream uh, on LinkedIn as well as on uh, YouTube, my name is Ravi Brahman. I'm the director for Student Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Also for those of you in the in the room, uh, you know, it, it's been a, a while since you know uh, I'm used to watching everybody in a little square. Now it's live and in person. It's like Wow, this is amazing, we're back. Uh, so uh, please do reach out to our Center for Entrepreneurship. We are so thankful for the partnership with SCORE for providing us unlimited mentoring uh, for our students. And we have many success stories that have made it to our convocation because of SCORE mentoring. Our students have you know, uh, turned into thriving businesses and are doing pretty well because of uh, the resources and the mentoring that, that's provided at SCORE. So I have the honor of, uh, you know, partnering with such fantastic organizations in the region. But I'm going to pass it to Andrea because this is really about fashion and retail, and this is your industry. So uh, tell, tell us a little more. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And I want to thank our partners at SCORE. We could not, we, we're great partners, and we couldn't do what we do without the resources that they bring. As Robbie said, I'm Andrea Bonner. I'm the chair of Consumer Arts and Sciences at Houston Community College, Central College. In our area, we have fashion design, fashion merchandising. We also have culinary, pastry, and hospitality, which don't apply to what we're talking about today, but just so you know. Um, we also have one of our professors here today, um, Professor Pfizer, who teaches in the fashion design program. And you pulled out the handbag. She's also a handbag designer. She does everything. But um, thank you, Robbie, again. Um, wanted to tell you all, we do have you can get an associate's degree in fashion design, fashion merchandising, um, as well as several certificates. Um, again, we're at Central Campus, uh, 3601 Fannin. Um, we also, next week, we have a new How to Make It in Fashion series where we're gonna be bringing in industry people to talk to us about how they made it, and the ups and downs and all of that. And Cesar Galindo, if any of you all know, is a fashion designer. Um, he's from Houston, he lives in New York. Um, he is a design director for himself as well as Kamora Lee Simmons, and he's going to be on campus to talk about um, his successes. But again, we would love to have you. We have classes all year round, uh, getting ready to start the summer session, but uh, feel free. I'm going to leave some cards for you. Uh, again, um, it's great to learn the technique, but uh, and we have a lot of students that say they want to start their own business, but what does that mean? And we, the people at SCORE uh, are, again, great resources to um, help you become successful in any fashion business. So, thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, as Andrea said, she's got cards for you to, uh, to, to reach out to her. Uh, I just want to tell you, you know, get an education, which all of you are doing. Uh, ATC operates about 70 buildings in Houston. We're everywhere, and we're very accessible. We're also very affordable. So consider it, and most of the times, uh, thanks to federal aid and grants and scholarships, it doesn't cost anything uh, for those who put in the effort and, and learn about these programs. I encourage you to get that education, and obviously work with our center, work with SCORE to build your business. Uh, we really want you, and, and we are you know, proud to say we're cheerleaders for you, because once you say you want to start a business or want to uh, pursue the path of entrepreneurship. Our goal is to cheerlead, get you in front of places and, and people that can help you move forward with your uh, uh, venture. And ultimately for us, um, you are going to represent the future uh, business owners of Houston. Uh, you're going to be hiring uh, future students from HCC and so on. So we really want you to succeed. So uh, we're equally partnered with you to support. All of these resources are free. Please reach out to us, uh, you know, and as Andrea said, we'll have our business cards. And thank you so much, Score. We're going to pass it back to you. Thank you for this plug, <laughs> shameless plug <laughs> for HCC. But uh, we, we genuinely appreciate 
um, the, the experts that you provide us and the mentoring that you provide our students. Thank you so much for, for doing this. Thank you. I want to back up for just a minute about my successful client that makes bags. I didn't tell you what she did last year in sales. Anyone want to guess? Starting out in business, first year, little over hundred thousand dollars at fifty percent profit or better. This year she's on track to do three hundred thousand dollars, all because of basically social media. She knows how to do it. You're going to hear from Abby how to do social media. If you're planning on going to business without it, your chances of success are very low. Social media is all about it. Developing a good website, a changing website, something with motion possibly on the home page to get their immediate attention. Because you only have a few seconds, as you know, to capture attention. Mm -hmm. Gabby's going to talk about that, how to capture your audience. Um, by the way, I forgot to mention, the bathroom important information is out the door to the left and then to the right down the hall. Okay, forgot to mention that. Okay. Uh, back to Jerry. Uh, uh, Jerry started with Men's Square, where I left off, at Landswell Cashmere and Alpaca. Then he switched to manufacturing women's sportswear, blouses, skirts, and knit tops. Of course, you're going to hear from him the number one seller is what? You want to guess out of those three things. What's the number one seller? Ladies. Uh, blouses, skirts, or knit tops. What's the number one seller? I'll let him tell you. Because no, that's not mine. He'll tell you, okay? Uh, I'll leave that in suspense right now. But he can he really knows as much as um, the basic target that he's going after is ages forty to seventy, which is a pretty wide range, which means you've got to have a, quite a variety of what you're showing. Um, he's going to start off by speaking about starting an online clothing business with minimal funds. Again, in the market materials you saw online, it was one line buried in the bottom. We wanted that to be the top line, but it didn't turn out. Starting a business for only $3,000. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Jerry, you're on. Oh, yes, I almost forgot. Please fill this out. We want to collect these because this is going to be part of the basis for our panel discussion. Uh, the number one thing that we learned from the last survey we did that you all wanted to know more about was sourcing. And that's something that Jim is an excellent, uh, Jim Davis is excellent on. So we're going to move that like forward in our discussions because sourcing seems to be the biggest problem. Where can I buy it for the least amount of money and quality? Okay, thank you. So the most important thing I'd like you to do today is uh, they may ask you, uh, the president of SCORE is here, and so they may ask you uh, how did the sh uh, show go and how did the seminar go. So let's make sure that you give us a really good report, okay? That's, that's the most important thing we can do today. So uh, let's talk about uh, uh, the business in, in, uh, in general, that the apparel business is probably the second or third toughest business to go into. And the reason is that there are so many businesses that, that you see online. So how are you going to be different? And that's, that's what you have to uh, approach, okay? How, how, how much you, you're going to do on that. So uh, let's put up the first slide, if you would. Harvey, Jerry, please fill us out and, and send it forward. We need this for discussion, for the past discussion. Please, if you will, take a moment, fill it out. It's only two questions we're asking, two items we're asking that you want to hear about. Thank you, Jerry. So I, I have one other thing I, I might influence you on that uh, uh, if you uh, want to do what I'm suggesting, you don't have to go into the fashion business. And that's, I would marry the money. That would just <laughs> make it much easier. That's what I did, by the way. 
So let's let's start with uh, fundamentals. Uh, when when a client comes to uh, to us, uh, uh, hopefully we catch them in time before they spend too much money, particularly in the fashion business when you first start. So you want to get either a DBA doing business as or an LLC, and the LLC is about three hundred and fifty dollars, and the DBA is about eighteen dollars. Most people, when they come to me, it's too late. They've already gotten the LLC. So, but if you haven't, the DBA would be the way to go. It's only eighteen dollars, and if you become quite successful, then later you can switch on to, to the LLC. The other thing, I can't hear me. Sorry. Okay. Be careful not to put the uh, okay. mic on the speaker. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you. Uh, so, um, wow. So, uh, the domain name. So, make sure that, that you have the rights to the, uh, to the domain name when, when you're looking up. I, I'm very good at uh, naming companies and helping people name companies, and it's amazing how many are taken. Uh, I, uh, I think doing flowers is a good name for a uh, a clothing company and doing it in French and so forth and every one of these are seem to be taken from violet to, uh, uh, Verde th these, those kinds of different names so uh, an EIN number these are all basics most of you probably already have a lot of this but I'm just one for those people who don't so an EIN number for tax reasons you need a sales tax ID uh, uh, insurance uh, may not need a lot, but, but you do need some insurance. And business checking account. So it's very important that when starting the business, the very first day you want, the second day you want to get in to get a business checking account under your name, separating it from your personal account. Okay, and so that you also make sure that you cover your expenses, right, because for tax reasons. And the last thing is uh, call your business. If, if, if there's some regulations that you don't know about or want to find out about, yes, you can come to SCORE, but who's somebody even better than that on regulations is Houston Business Solutions. So you might want to take a note on that if you need, need to do anything on regulations. Or if you're going into some other business than, than the, the uh, clothing business, you, you might ask for regulations if you're going in the food business. So next slide, please. So who is going to buy from you? And so I narrowed it down to basically this two. You really need to understand this if you're going in the business. And remember, a lot of you only have 5,000 or 10,000. Some of you only have 3,000. And so that's not a lot of money to put a lot of clothes on online. And so. You need to know who your target customer is so that when you're buying to resell, you want to make sure that you focus on that particular group. And so I, I brought it down to two groups. It's the 18 to 40 or 18 to 45. It's the young Missy customer. And most of you are just about every person in this room is, a, is what I call a young Missy customer. And that's not what my personal business was. I was, uh, I was after the Missy cu customer. 45 to 70. Uh, I started my business at the uh, same time as Ralph Lauren. Uh, uh, I used to live four blocks from Ralph Lauren, and uh, the only difference between him and me is that uh, I forgot to put a polo player on my <laughs> shirts. <laughs> and, and so there was a few few hundred million difference in, in success story there. So, so anyway. Focus on who your client is. In, in this room, really, everybody is in, is in that in that group. So target that customer. So the next one is. So you're going in business. You know what 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 benefits does the customer get from you going in business? And I want you to answer it. I, I put up some of the reasons that you could say what the benefits are, but let's talk about the four that I put up. On your website, you want you want to talk to them about what the latest. And it makes you feel the customer feel to the client that's looking at your website that you provide the latest fashion trend. So this lady 
So this company knows what they're doing. I provide the latest color trends. So wow, this person knows what's going on in, in, in every year. And by the way, talking about color trends, if you're going to uh, start your online business, let's say for uh, next fall, you ought to do some research as to what the color trends are so that when you're going to market, you know that purple is going to be one of the big colors next year. So you ought to be buying some things in the color purple. Designer looks at affordable prices, so that gets me some in that gets somebody interested with their online of, of uh, hey, they have designer looks and they're at affordable prices. And Jim and I, uh, in particular, uh, always talk about when whenever we co-mentor, uh, does this lady or this guy have a fashion eye? It's I don't think you can teach that. Yes either have a natural ability for the clothing business or you don't and that fashion eye is so so important so uh, by the way uh, uh, when uh, Richard was talking about the gym he also uh, was uh, the head of the design team for Ann Taylor and so uh, he, he knows a lot about the business inside and out the manufacturing as well so let's go to the next slide There's no bigger question that SCORE mentors do than making sure that we ask this question. If you're going in the cookie business, you're going in the plumbing business, whatever you're, why, why, why does somebody want, why should they buy your cookie when there's 40,000 other cookie people in the, in the business? So why should they buy clothing from you? You people are up against 18, I, I made this up. I don't know. It may be more than that. There's at least 18,000 online clothing stores. So you have a tough task. And now, let's say 30 of you go in business. So there's 18,030 now, right, go, go, going in business uh, that you're going to be competing against. So the first thing I would do when, when you're doing your business plan uh, is talk about, and look at and uh, looking at your website, looking at the back of your business card and just your general elevator speech is bullet points, bullet points, bullet points, okay? So I'd like everybody for homework, when you think about your company, I want you to think of five reasons why somebody should buy your clothing online. And so I'm gonna make it easy for you. Three of the five can be exactly what some other company is doing. That's okay. Find that niche. What's what's different about your company? What makes it so different? What are the bullet points? And that's in any business you go into. Okay, this is so important. Why 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 should anybody? Nobody heard of you before. All of a sudden, you have a website, and you think people are just going to run to your website and go, "Oh wow!" Then you you have to get those bullet points there. So. Elevators. You talk about fun. Okay, so uh, this is what the, my tagline was for my company, uh, and so I'm sharing it with you all today. And it's my clothes were fun, they were fashionable, and they were functional. Wow, that, 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 I think I'm going to brag about that. I think that's pretty pretty darn good. You wear clothes that are fun and they're fashionable and they're also functional. So. That's something you could steal from me if you'd like, okay? <laughs> By the way, the clothing business is all about stealing. I was a total success story by copying Ralph Lauren. That's what I did. <laughs> Look at what he did last year. Nobody knew about you know, how many people bought, bought his clothes. And that's that's how you can be successful. Other than marrying for money, right? That, that's, that's number one. Okay. So let's switch to the next one. Okay, so I... Social media obviously is not my bag, and I only put this up to, to say, how do you reach customers to sell merchandise? So obviously the three, you all know, you know the social media website and, and influence it. But, 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 there's another way, particularly when you're small and new and nobody knows who you are. And the next slide I'm gonna show you is the way to find out not only to how to sell merchandise, but you learn so much. If I can get the next slide, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, 
You can learn so much by going to farmers markets, pop-up shops, festivals, events. Uh, Richard was talking about that lady that went to um, uh, Rob Ranta. Uh, I forgot to mention uh, that the reason I, I uh, recommend uh, farmers markets is they're fifty dollars. The average farmers market is fifty dollars. So you can learn so much, and it's not a big investment to do fifty dollars. But you, the customer comes to your booth and they go, "Oh, I love this blouse you're doing, but it's too expensive." Or I wish it had a stripe on. You you learn at markets for fifty dollars. So don't worry about making a profit at, at a farmer's market. It's learning about your product and whether people like it or not, and whether you're in the right direction. By the way, I have an opinion. Uh, 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 Richard brought it up before. Um, if you have, in the amount of money I'm talking about, uh, let's say up to twenty or thirty thousand dollars, maybe twenty. Uh, I have an opinion, not a fact, but an opinion. This is a fact: eighty percent of a woman's wardrobe. You ladies think. Uh, Eighty percent of a women's wardrobe is a top, and so if I were you, all you out here, I would be thinking if, if you're in that up to twenty thousand dollar range, I, I would think about just doing tops. When people come to me, they come to me and they want to do skirts and blouses and, and uh, dresses, and and you can eventually, but. 80%. Just think, think of, 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 your, of your own wardrobe. You're walking by a store, ladies, and you see an $80 or $150 top, and you really don't want to spend that much. But if it's good looking, there's a chance you might buy a $150 top because it's so exciting. By the way, uh, I started in the men's business, uh, uh, manufacturing men's sweaters. And then I got married. and. Uh, I looked at my wife's wardrobe at the beginning of our marriage, and she had six pair of black pants, four denim pants, and four white pants. And then we went out to dinner at somebody's house about six weeks later or something, and uh, this lady was a really good dresser, and I said, do you mind if I look at your closet? I'm just kind of curious about something. And so I looked, and she had nine black pants, six denim and six white, and I kept doing that with, with our friends. And so I decided women buy something, men buy, buy something, a khaki pant every four years or every three years. A woman buys every three weeks. Uh, a, a, a man buys a sweater every four years. I was in the sweater business. And a woman buys a new dress or a new top every four weeks. And then a man buys underwear every 10 years, and, 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 and a woman every 10 weeks, they're buying something new, right? Yeah. So, so I, that's how I switched to the ladies' business, uh, was that. And it's amazing, uh, and if someone at the end of this seminar could, could uh, tell me, why do you need nine black pants? Is it one for H-E-B, and then one to go to Randall's, and then I, I don't understand, okay? But I understand I make a lot of money if I go in the ladies' business because they're always buying. Yeah. So, uh, next question is, how many people here uh, are going in the men's business? Okay. Um, if you heard what I said, hopefully I talked you out of it. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> but you still can make money in the men's business, but you better be different, like I said, right? Yeah. Be better. What, what's different about you? Uh, so, how, I, so everybody else probably is going in the online clothing business. But the third question is, how many people are, are going in the uh, a brick and mortar clothing store? Is there anybody? What a smart group. This is terrific. OK. That's, that's the correct thing. If you're going to start a clothing business, you want to start online. And if you explode and do great on the online business, then then sure, then go, they'll go into the, uh, the retail brick and mortar store. So let's talk about the farmers markets 
here. Yourneighborhoodfarmersmarket.com, I think it is, or yourneighborhoodfarmersmarket.com. They own seven or eight uh, establishments across town, so you can get a lot of different places where you can go to a market. Uh, the all events and fashion one, the second one is, is uh, they show you all events. They might be a little bit more expensive than a farmer's market. It, even uh, event price, same thing. They, they, all the events that are happening in Houston is what you can find out there. Traders Village is a very good clothing kind of farmer's market. Belleville, Texas. Once a month, Belleville, Texas has a, uh, a, a festival. And so that's a, a, it's a two-day festival, so, so it's, and that's a nice place to, to think about uh, going for a um, farmer's market. Uh, East Side, Sugar Land, Memorial Hill, that, that's just, just a different, different ones. So Chapel Hill, that one is, I think, this coming week you might want to go just to see what it's like. Uh, ten, you better get there early. 10,000 to 15,000 people go to the, there's two shows a year, one called The Scarecrow and the other one called The Blue Bonnet. So that's a great show to show. I bet that's not fifty dollars. It might be a little bit more more money. Uh, and the one that Richard talked about in, in Round Top, I didn't finish my story there. Was that uh, that one also could be more expensive? But you can do ten, twenty, thirty thousand uh, at, at a show like that in Round Top. Uh, this is for kids. HK uh, runways is for kids. And the creme de la creme of all farmers markets. It's first Monday trade in camp. Now listen to this. First Monday is the name of the uh, farmer's market. Uh, excuse me. Uh, it's not a farm. It's a flea market, but it's like a farmer's market. It's the largest farmer's market, flea market in the United States, probably in the world. Really? The average, the average attendance at that place is between 30,000 and 100,000 depending on that weekend. And it's called First Monday because they used to have it on Monday. It used to be a five-day show. It's now a four-day show, so Monday's not involved. It's Thursday, Friday, <laughs> Saturday, and Sunday. Okay? So, so I want you to listen to how much that costs, that show. It costs $60 for the whole show. Okay? Or that four days is sixty dollars. There's thousands and thousands of vendors, and there's thousands and thousands of people. The only sort of bad part of, of, of that is it's in uh, near uh, Canton, Texas, or in Canton, Texas. And if you could find a friend that you could stay with, the, the, the motel room, right? It's going to cost money. So you try and if you could find somebody in Longview, Texas, East Texas, uh, Tyler, Texas, Dallas, Texas, about thirty-seven miles away. So if you can find somebody, then you don't have that that extra motel expense. I don't think you should go to this place at the beginning of your of, of, of your starting your business, but after you do several farmers markets and get the feel and the hang of it, and, and you may not have time to do a show like this, but I'm just mentioning for those people who this is their total business, this is a this is a way. So that's the kind of of uh, farmers markets. So uh, what else was I going to talk about? Oh. Listen, it's criminal. Does everybody hear the word criminal? To go to a farmer's market, have a booth, and not get email addresses. Okay? So don't let... So, but you can't just say sign up for an email address. Give them a reason to sign up. If you sign up for the email address, you, you will get all our promotions that we do and the sales that we have and the new trends that we have and the new and the new ideas that we have. Or that's one way. Or another way is you could have a contest and say at the end of the show, farmers market, I'm gonna be mailing to whoever wins uh, my one knit shirt or whatever it is that you that you have. Okay? So I'm gonna repeat the word criminal. Don't let anybody leave your place without getting a, their email address. Okay, so uh, if I could get another slide, I'll talk about what it is on here. Okay, t-shirts. Uh, I don't know, I must have had in the last 10 years 150 people who just want to do t-shirts, and there's different ways to do t-shirts. The first two, uh, Printify and Printful, 
they do the whole package for you. So, so when they do the whole package for you, they're going to package it for you. They're going to ship it for you. You can, you have no inventory, so that's fabulous, right? And and so you can buy one at a time. But the negative is that it's about seventeen to eighteen dollars. So when you pay seventeen and eighteen dollars. And they do all the work, that's great, but now you have to retail it for them. And you want to get double your money usually, well we'll talk about that later, but at least double your money. So that's a $35 t-shirt and it's sort of overpriced. The t in my opinion, the t-shirt market, fashionable t-shirt market is 25 to 30. And I, I think you could sell 25 to $30 t-shirts all day long if they're good looking and unusual. So the rest of them are just Places that I have sent people to to, to do t-shirts in town, and usually they're ten to eleven dollars. So now we're going to be talking about later how much you should retail your your garments that you're buying. So uh, let's talk about uh, that. You bought a t-shirt for ten dollars. Remember, two point five. We're going to talk about it later. You multiply times two point five. That's the way every retail store works for 2.3 so 10 times no, 10 times 2.5 is 25 dollars so you're in that 25 to 30 dollar range okay on the bottom is bell and canvas san Juan tsc apparel those are just different t-shirt companies they're all basically have a, a, a good quality and, and they're all good i just listed them in case you heard names is tsc better than san Juan bell and canvas no i think they're all pretty equal, okay, if you're going to the t-shirt business. So when you get a chance, Gabby, uh, I appreciate you uh, that. So, Jim's going to be talking about where you buy merchandise uh, and, and, and sourcing, and so uh, you're going to go to market and you're going to uh, buy an item that you think is, is nice, and they're, if you're $40 or under, they're probably going to be not probably. They are definitely packed six pieces. Usually it's one, two, two, one, but if you're in the young Missy business, that manufacturer might do it two small, two medium, one large, one extra large, but you have to buy six pieces. So let's I put this up because I wanted to talk about how little you could start a, a, a business of $3,000. Uh, that, that you can do this. So, if the average cost that you bought a garment, you bought, you bought 12 garments, different different styles, and, and you had uh, 20, 20 times 6 pieces is $120 times the 12, 12 uh, uh, styles is $1440. Uh, skip this line here. And I just guessed, I don't know how much the website is, Gabby will talk to you about that, but let's just say $800 I put down, so you got $2240, and you have boxes and pencils and uh, paper that you have to do when, you, when you're sending it, if you're going to do it yourself, right? Uh, uh, you, the merchandise comes into your house or your garage, and then you, you ship from there, that's $200, and so you have about $560 uh, of uh, advertising money or whatever ever money, money you're going to use. So, so sorry, you can have 12 styles and that's that's a pretty nice selection if you're a brand new company and that's why I go back to focusing that. All of them, you can't do dresses, pants, and, 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 and tops. Also, I have another opinion about tops. When, when you buy a pant, or, you, or you're just trying to sell a pant, and you have a, a size 4, it doesn't matter, 4, 6, 8, 10, uh, and you have a size 4, not every 4 fits the same one. So my, my, my wife's a 4, and she loves, she has to talk about love Ralph Lauren, it fits her. But my friend, her friend, can't wear Ralph Lauren, her, she's a 4 also. She, she, she can't wear So there's the danger of when you're selling pants, that they come back, okay? But that's not the, the main reason is because 80% of your wardrobe is, is tops. Whenever you see a good look at top, there's a chance you're gonna, you're gonna buy it. So we're back to th uh, the $3,000. So at least you have a nice selection of 12 tops. You're telling a story, you're focusing on, on, on what I think is, is really sellable. Uh, I'm sorry, next slide when you get a chance, please. 
So I started with this slide, Jim. Uh, like, what do you see when you see see this uh, 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 kind of? Uh, uh, I see a good looking woman. Oh. <laughs> that, that, I shouldn't have asked him the question. Okay. Uh, uh, so what I did was I did some research. I, I've been out of the business about 15 years, and I did some research. I still have friends in the business, and I try to find out what's trending today. And cutouts are trending today. Fringes, uh, and, and so I think this is what I would buy this dress if, if I was still in the dress business. Uh, uh, to resell because it goes with Western stores, it goes with just fashion, it's fringe, which is in. And what's really fabulous about this is I love the asymmetrical look to it. It gives a, a, a reason for a customer to buy that, that dress. And the other one is a dumbass animal print, okay? And pardon my language, I won't say print. Uh, again, uh, okay. okay. So I had animal prints. Animal prints have been style for about 800 years, and, and usually it's the, the older Missy customer that loves animal prints. But so do the young Missy customer. If you put it into a let's just I'll make it up a a cutout, you know. So so an animal print. But animal prints always sell. And if you have room, I put an animal print in your line. Okay, that's how strong. It, leopards, lions, it doesn't, doesn't matter, tigers, the prints always sell, okay? So let's go to the next slide. And so this is my research. I, I, I found out that cutouts are still in. They've been in for, for the last six months, but, but they're still in. So I found this on the website, and oh my God, I'm so excited. That, there isn't any, I would buy that for my online store in a minute. There isn't anybody except for the man over the men in, in this room that would, I, I think any one of you possibly could buy that, that, that top. I think that's how cute it is. Uh, that's my taste level. That's my eye, 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 what my eyesight says. But I could be wrong. Anybody want to challenge me that that's not a good looking top? Okay. <laughs> Nobody. Okay. So if you can switch, uh, and this just, Three more cutouts that I thought were great. And so it's a way to tell a story if I'm online, right? I could have had two or three tops on. I could, if, if I had 12, only 12 styles to do, I could do three styles in cutouts, three styles in fringe, or, or, or so. Okay? So um, the, next, the next one is fringe, and then I picked this out because I said fringe was. I did my research, so you need to do your research. If you're going to go online store for fall clothes next year, you need to find out what's trending for next year. So I found out that fringes, so, so it's, uh, I picked this out uh, online. Okay. So uh, it's hard to see this, but uh, I, I hate it. <laughs> it's ugly as hell, but <laughs> mixing prints. A uh, better, better word is mixing ugly prints together is in for next for next, for next season. Okay, so if it's ugly, buy it. Okay. Yes. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's switch. So, uh, Jim, let me see how smart you are. You ever heard of the word rushing? As smart as smart as you are in the business. Okay. He, he's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, Rushi is in for next year, and so I've just picked, picked a bunch of uh, outfits here, but a, a, a Rushi top would be fantastic. I couldn't find one, but a Rushi top would be great to, uh, to put in your line. Uh, sorry, keep going. Okay. okay. If anybody in this room doesn't like this print right here, this is psychedelic print. So if you don't like this print, Jim and I think that you don't have an eye for business, okay? No, no, no. Everybody has different tastes. But I think that's a sensational print, okay, guys? Uh, uh, just and it's exciting. And, you know, we've had florals for the last year to a year and a half, and I still think they're, they're still going on. But look at the updated prints here and, and how exciting they are. So, so you bring, and there's a reason why someone goes to Art, you're online, and you're up against 18,000 people and all of a sudden you got this cute print 
okay? Gives a customer, even though you're brand new, a reason to buy from you, okay? Why should I buy from you? That's what you, you that's the major question. Okay, sorry, I'm yelling. <laughs> okay, I, I didn't like, uh, this is my fault, I couldn't find it. Color block is in, so I just, I, I, I'm not like this picture, but, but color blocking is in, and it's always in, by the way, uh, or at least it was for me in the missing market, okay? I usually had an animal print and a color block almost every new season I had. Um, okay, let's, let's keep going. Okay, well, what's different about denim? Um, by the way, I forgot to mention when I was showing you all those tops, these were people showing their tops, and every one of those people were wearing. Can, can you slip back to the to the cutouts? Yeah. Okay. So I, I talked about why women they have a black pen, a white pen, and then right. And so everyone, every time you see a picture, they're always showing it with somebody wearing the denim bottom or the black bottom, and all these tops go great. Uh, we can go back to the to where I was. Just wanted to show that. So denim has always been in. You all have six or nine pair of uh, denim in, in your wardrobe, but this season, uh, coming up spring, denim head to toe. So that's a look uh, of, uh, that's going on in the marketplace. And next fall, it may not be. I'm just showing you what's happening right now for spring. Let's, let's switch. Okay. Uh, down here, the research I did, uh, I had in my line 98% of whatever I showed uh, in my line every season, including fall, was bright colors. And that's because 80% of my business was done in the southwest here, Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and the southeast, Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, 80% of my business was done there. I did business all over the country, but that 80% of it. And the Southeast and the Southwest love bright colors. So if your market that you're after is in, uh, in, in the Texas area or the Southwest area, then brights, 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 okay? We'll go to the next uh, slide. So I just put, uh, actually this is an old, old one, so I'm not sure ruffles are in. This is an old slide, so let's skip it. Okay, so why did I put this up is because, again, if you're going to do a stripe, don't do a dumbass stripe, okay? Do, do, do a stripe that at least has some, some character to it. So look, look at the way they did this, the stripes. Different colors on the arm, different colors here, different way they, they did it, variegated stripe. Uh, zigzag stripe on, on, on the left. I gave the customer a reason to buy a stripe if you're going to do a stripe, okay? Uh, just a plain stripe going like this. How exciting is that? Like a solid white box. Okay. <laughs> let's let's switch to uh, another one. So I told you I wasn't going to talk about uh, anything to do with uh, digital marketing, but I had a, a, a client that sold men's ties. And I thought this was so imaginative uh, that he had a lady wearing a bow tie. He's selling men's ties. I thought that was a, uh, a great website uh, 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 to, uh, uh, to just show you a website that's different. So also check out Mint Julep. They don't do this anymore, but uh, this was the single best website I've ever seen. And so let's go to the next website. Not the next website, the next. <laughs> the next frame. So the way that Mint Julep did it is the first line, the first frame one. When uh, Gabby will tell you what the average is, so I'm going to guess, Gabby. Uh, the, the average website time that you have for someone to stay on your website is, is I'm guessing, Gabby, you'll tell later, 15 to 20 seconds. So Mint Julep did the first frame. The frame came on, in three seconds it said, easy returns. If you're a woman and you see in three seconds, easy returns, oh wow, that's nice, I can always return my stuff, no problem. Second frame came up, free shipping. 
oh, great, I don't have to pay for shipping, easy returns. And then the third uh, frame came up, new arrivals daily. So I didn't like what I saw online, but all of a sudden, man, I need to look at this uh, company again because I don't like what, they sort of got some good stuff. So I, they got new arrivals, I, I, I ought to go to this. So I stole this idea of, of what what those three frames. That was done in nine seconds, right? They told the whole message. So I made up this, and mine's going to take four, four, and four. So mine's going to take 12 seconds to 15 in the framework that I think you can do. And I'm going to tell a whole story about my company. So the first frame I have is copying them. And then the second frame I have, tops that are fashion, fun, and I forgot to put functional. Okay, so so you got uh, a fashion fund and functional, and then anything I bought uh, uh, for for our company was always a year-round fabric. Okay, because I told you, eighty percent of the business is down here. You don't need those any wools or anything. So everything was year-round fabrics. So I gave people a read, in, right? In two frames, I've already told ninety percent of my company, and then I also told them about that I'm I'm an expert in trends. And, and I know all about color direction. So in 12 seconds, 13 seconds, and also I surrounded it around with pictures, right, of, of, of my merchandise. In 12 to 15 seconds, I told my whole story. And then if you left me, it's because you're a terrible buyer. <laughs> I have good stuff. <laughs> so if you all uh, switch me one more time to another uh, frame. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, no, I don't know, say it, say it. No, I, I, I go to the, I'm sorry, I messed up on that, messed up, keep, keep going. Okay, so uh, sometimes uh, you're going to need somebody to hire, and so we listed a whole bunch of ways that you could hire somebody in uh, digital marketing from ads to web design to uh, SEO and content on the first one. And so one of the companies happens to be back on the bottom, back to work mom club. And so uh, Gabby uh, is a volunteer. She doesn't get paid, but and, and so she's uh, nice enough to, to, to do that. But eventually, not everything is free, and you have to, on SEO, uh, you have to hire somebody. And so I'm a little prejudiced here, but I'm going to tell you why I, I think you ought to at least interview her, her company, if you're going to interview companies. She should be one of the four or five that you interview, uh, because I'm so impressed with, she's so involved in getting, making sure nobody spends any money, She, including herself. She doesn't like to spend money. Uh, the best story I can give you about Gabby is, uh, my granddaughter was getting uh, uh, graduation, and uh, I was looking for graduation debt, and there was this, forgive me for bragging, but there was this $1,200 dress. And as I told you, I'm married for money, so I can afford this. It was on sale for $275, and I called Gabby. I said, Gabby, I got a $1,200 for $275. And Gabby says, well, my daughter's graduating too. And I got a $250 dress for $79, and she sent me a picture. Of course, it was prettier than mine, and so forth. So she's spending $79, I'm paying $275, and she's saving money and having a better dress than I am. So she will save you money, okay? That's the, that's the story about that. And she's also cheap. No, sorry. I didn't mean that. <laughs> okay. If you can't have fun, uh, we don't, we don't, by the way, we get paid by the laughs. Okay, and I'm not doing too good today, but uh, I, we usually get paid by the laughs, okay? But we love doing what we do. Uh, let, let, let me, I think I'm going to digress for 10 seconds. Uh, if you're serious about uh, going in, in, in the online in clothing business, and you're, and you're ready to do it, when you're ready to do it, you should take advantage of, of who we are, because we're not just a free service. The first guy to talk, Richard Stanley, is so tenacious and so insightful and so uh, good at what he does. And I will guarantee you that if you took him as a mentor, I guarantee you that 
there's a good chance you might be successful, okay, if, if you really want to work hard. And I'm not going to put him in a league by himself because Jim Davis is probably the most dedicated score guy. He, he, he will see you once every two days. That's how nuts he is. Uh, and, and he's just like a teddy bear. He's just the sweetest guy in the world, okay? And if you decide on me for a mentor, uh, uh, we have somebody here. Tamron, where are you? Okay, so Tamron, she just uh, mended with me yesterday, and she'll tell you, I yell at you if you do things and say, uh, you know, I get good service or something like that. So I'm a yeller, and you may not want to do me, but but I'm pretty good in the clothing business, okay? Let me tell you what, what um, and by the way, Gabby, we're not going to do is but once you pass Jim, uh, Richard, and me, then we send you to Gabby for, for the thing. So that's why we don't mention her as a, as a mentor right now. So let me tell you some of the things we don't do well score. If you look at the board up there, can't see the letters, they're crooked and so forth. So we're not, we're not good at, at blackboards, okay? Okay, okay. He, you, you may tell me I have only five minutes, but I like to speak, and so I'm going to be here another half hour with Richard, okay? <laughs> okay, so digital marketing, my friends. Let's go to the next one. Okay, Keystone is just the terminology used in the, in the, in the ladies' business. When you're at market, they'll say it's Keystone. It means double. So uh, someone says uh, it's uh, forty dollars at Keystone's at forty dollars. It means it costs twenty. Keystone double is is, is called Keystone. But in today's marketplace, today, not when I was in business, everything's remember it's two point three to two point five. So let's talk about how. what is your markup. So this is the way you figure markup. You, you take, uh, uh, let's do a, the example I used before. $20 times 2.5 is uh, $50. What, uh, what markup am I getting? I, I know I'm getting 2.5, what markup it is. So you take the total price, $50, and subtract what you paid for it which was 20, 20 from 50 is 30, and you divide it by the retail price, which is 50. So 50 into 30, 60% markup. Okay, so 2.5 means 60% markup. So sometimes uh, uh, you, you, uh, you see something and, and it doesn't look $50, right? You, you pay 20 for it and so you mark it 46 or 47. That's still a 56% markup, 56.9, whatever that comes to. Okay, so so I want you to think about about that all the time. Okay, let's uh, uh, go to the next one, please. Okay, when you pass go, meaning pass Richard at six or eight times, or Jim or me, uh, we'll talk about an open to buy. What what an open to buy means, but. The biggest message on this board here, in fact, it's probably the number one message I want to tell everybody here. In my career in business, more retailers, including online retailers, have gone out of business because they they started the company, they had five thousand dollars, and they bought the total five thousand dollars code. Didn't give themselves room in case something didn't sell. Okay. So inventory will kill you. It's, it's put out so many. These are my people that I love, that they were my customers that I love. And they went out of business because they, they overbought. Probably I oversold them. <laughs> no, I didn't do that. But anyway, this is, this is what, what will kill your business. So, so watch your inventory. Oh, when you get to market, next to last, when you get to market, and, and you buy there and so forth, and you get the merchandise. Uh, you uh, you go home and then things are bad, right? That you've already put your online clothing on, you're buying more goods, and you're choking and you're not going sales. You can cancel orders. So the reason I'm bringing it up is you call a manufacturer and you say, uh, I, I need to cancel that order because my business is not good. And he goes, you can't cancel. 
Of course you can. You haven't paid for it. You can cancel any time. Don't worry about it, okay? Don't let the manufacturer bully you. So I, I want to emphasize that, okay? Don't let them bully you. So lockdowns, the definition of a lockdown. The definition of a lockdown is merchandise that is not selling that you want to get rid of so that you can buy new, more exciting merchandise that might sell, different than what you have. So when, when you go on uh, online and you're, and you're trying to sell, and you go 10% off or 20% off, you're being silly, okay? That's not what's happening in the marketplace. That's why department stores are 40, 50. Let's just use this example. Start off with 40% off. What's 40% off of $50? It's twenty dollars. It's so you so you're now going to get thirty dollars on on what we call a, a, a merchandise that's a dog. It's not selling. You you pay twenty for it, you, or you're forty percent off. You're still getting thirty. You still made ten bucks, not a lot, but you, you're still the, let take fifty off. Okay, so now you're at twenty five. You still made five dollars, right? And and then sixty percent off, you're even. But you, it's not selling, guys. Get rid of it. It's, it doesn't, you know, okay. Let's go to the next. You need to be prepared. So Richard talked about a business plan. One of the most important things you do in, in, in clothing business is business plans. So one of the, not clothing business, anyway. And uh, you need to be prepared when you go to market about styling. So now, if we use my example of Three to five thousand to ten thousand dollars. You want to know? I'm, I'm going to do tops. So how many tops can I buy? And by style, well, by style meaning, well, I think I want to buy fringe. I want to buy cutouts. I want to buy, you know, and you'll see it market what you want to buy. So you now know by style how how many. I only want three, the most three cutouts and three fringes or whatever it is. By size, so hopefully. Uh, you could pick the size. I remember that pack sixes. So uh, if you're in the young missing market, they may have extra small. So maybe pack one extra small, two small, two medium, five, and, and one uh, large. Okay? But that's the way I would, if I was in, in, in the young missing business, I'd want an extra small, two small. So what? Uh, and in the, le uh, the ladies' missing business, one, two, two, one. One small, two medium, two large. One extra large is what most, how, how most things. In fact, today, uh, a lot of, of uh, people buy one small, one medium, two large, and two extra large for the older Missy customer that I was in. Uh, and, and by color. So <laughs> let me tell you what happens at market. Every showroom you go to, uh, you're always going to see uh, their sample is always in black or white. You have to take it for spring. Okay, so by the time you went to 12 showrooms, you bought 12 items. When you get home and you look at your stuff, you bought 12 black tops. Okay, so be careful that you're preparing by color what you're going to be buying. One last thing about uh, when you're at market, Jim will tell you this. He's going to tell you the same thing. Uh, do not leave an order. Take notes. Take pictures. You get back at home, you then analyze what you bought and then put it into the 15, 20 tops or whatever you're buying, okay? To, to get home and analyze it. It's overwhelming when you go to market. But Jim will talk about Let's go to the next one before he kicks me up out here. Uh, oh, they, are, they already went. Okay, so one minute left. I, 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 I can't believe I can't believe that you listened to the whole thing and didn't walk out on me. I'm very pleased with everybody today. Okay, Jim, uh, he, he's uh, he's the nicest of all the score members. That doesn't mean he's good. I'm just telling you he's nice. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Quick intro, quick intro. Oh, you do it, okay. All right, thank you, Jerry. Uh -huh. Thank you, wonderful presentation. As you can tell, he knows the business backwards and forwards. All you have to do is ask the question, you get the answer. If he doesn't know it, he's got the team to back him up on, okay? Remember, none of us know everything about business, but we can bring on as a co-mentor 
somebody that has the expertise you're looking for that we may not have. All you have to do is ask. Thank you, Bobby. Okay. Uh, a brief intro on Jim Davis. Uh, he's been 40 years in fashion retailing. He was a buyer at Foley's Houston. Then he went to California for Macy's. He was a buyer and merchandise manager there, followed by merchandise vice president at I Magnet uh, in San Francisco, followed by uh, vice president and general merchandise manager for The Limited. We all know about The Limited, don't we? Yes, very good line. Uh, and the Express Division in Columbus, Ohio, different cities here. Uh, followed by the Vice President of Product Development and Sourcing at Ann Taylor, New York. Sourcing, by the way, is the number one, I was just reviewing what you all want to know today. Sourcing came up as the number one request from this audience today. And Jim's going to sure going to tell us about that. Um, so Jim, I'm going to turn this over to you. You probably don't need this, but you're telling it. Yeah, I think we're out of the way. Do I have to use the microphone? Please, sir, for the live stream, it's very clear. Um, I, I, I hate it, but I'll do it. Thank you. <laughs> well, the first thing I'm going to tell you is that if you folks believe the bio that he just gave you, all that BS stuff, I got a bridge to Brooklyn. I'm going to make a deal for you after class that you won't believe. <laughs> You're supposed to laugh. Yes. Um, I'm, um, let's see. Uh, where to buy? Let's, can we go over? Yeah. Where to buy? No surprise, I don't think, to anyone, the fact that Asia, China, Korea, Taiwan to a certain extent, now Vietnam, are major places to uh, where merchandise is produced. It's hard to go almost anywhere. Even guys like Giorgio Armani, right? They're all making goods in um, in China because the machines are modern and good, and the sewing is excellent. The fabrics, our Bernese fabrics, all come out of Italy, so they ship them over there and have them sewn at much less price than um, than they would be if they were sewn in Italy because of the unionization. But. It's also quite difficult for, especially new businesses, to go to places like uh, get on a plane, go to Hong Kong, Shanghai. What are you, what are you going to do when you get there? I mean, it is, it's, as, it's almost as bad, it's worse than going to New York. I mean, at least in New York, you, there's, a, there's a market district, but not, not in Hong Kong. Um, there's a little bit of business done in Europe. Some done in the U.S., we, a small percentage that we still do in the U.S. is mainly t-shirts and underwear. Mm -hmm. We don't really, um, American Girl still makes some stuff in L.A., but the bottom line is it's uh, not a big portion of the business. Um, but we do have a marketplace, and virtually every brand, every name um, brand you can think of makes goods outside the United States, whether it's Calvin Klein, Donna Karen, um, Tommy Hilfiger, any of those kinds of people. So there are some domestic markets that you need to know about. Dallas is, of course, for us, the closest. Usually you can get in with a DBA so that they know and or a check. And we didn't, we're not getting into so much about how to start a business, but one of the things you should have after you get a DBA or an LLC is a business checking account. <clears throat> Suggested by me, small regional bank that doesn't have fees, that does it for free. People like Bank One, Bank of Texas, Amergy, there's a whole group of them. Uh, the Chases and the Wells Fargo's and the Bank of America is going to charge you uh, $30 a month if you don't keep a balance, you know, over 
$2,500 or so that kind of stuff. But a small checking account and a DBA or an LLC, you can get into the Dallas Mart or the Atlanta Mart. It says Las Vegas, and that's a show called Magic. Uh, it's obvious how old I am, but I went to the first magic show, which was in San Diego in like 1972. Uh, and, it, and magic came from the term the Men's Apparel Guild in California. It was just a little bitty thing in San Diego. Well, it didn't stay there very long because it got bigger and they moved it to LA to some giant convention center. And they outgrew that. Now it's in. It's been in Vegas at least since the mid '90s, and it is now fully men's and women's. It is the largest fashion show marketplace in the world. They only do it twice a year, but it's it's uh, chaotic. But it, you can see everything, whether you want to do men's or women's. Um, New York is, is hard because unless you have appointments and so forth, you can wander around forever and not find any showrooms at all. Maybe you go to 1407 Broadway or 535 uh, 7th Avenue, those kinds of places, and go in the buildings and look. But if you don't have appointments, you walk up to a door and it's like being outside there. You don't know what's in there and it, it's weird to go in. So New York in the beginning is not the best place. And most of the companies that are defined in New York have representatives uh, in Dallas or Atlanta, and for sure in, at Magic in Las Vegas. And, and meeting a local sales rep can be very advantageous, all right? There's no question that Italy is the best in Europe. UK has almost become irrelevant in the fashion world. Uh, France to a certain extent, but Italy is by far the, the in my opinion, I, I think it's really terrific. Um, so Asia, so let's move on. Jim, you want to talk about Dallas? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm saying with your DBA and and and, yeah. and the checking account, usually you can get in there. Um, Jerry's Jerry did a tremendous amount of business, as you probably heard. I actually did work at Ann Taylor for oh, a few days, 16 years, and um, <laughs> and, uh, and and Jerry's much more familiar, but. If you ask me right now, when's the next mark, the next market in Dallas? I couldn't tell you. Jerry can tell you. There's five markets a year, and there's a 12th, 14th, and 15th floor. This is a good reason I wanted you to talk about. Yeah. That. Uh, the, the Dallas market's a good way to get your feet wet. You don't have to buy anything. Just learn to walk around the building, and and the 14th floor is kind of the middle. Price range, the 15th floor is the expensive thing, and the 12th floor is new people. Okay, and just if you're really buying something, the 12th floor is these brand new companies, so you can get a lot of, a lot of good stuff. That's what I wanted to do. 12th floor, the 15th floor. I don't know if you got that right here or not, but it's okay. Um, okay, lost my train of thought. Now can we switch? Yeah. Okay. Some other places to buy merchandise. These, a lot of these uh, things like LA Showroom, Orange Shine, Good Stuff, Sap. These are these are websites where you can go. You can buy. Be very careful with quality. I mean. Sometimes some of the stuff that I've seen coming out of Orange Shine looks like it was sewn by me with blindfold on. So I don't mean to run anybody down, but.
but the but the fact is that it can be it can be treacherous. So test test before you commit a significant amount of money with any of these people. Now Alibaba is kind of like Amazon in China, and you can do a lot of work uh, and and find a lot of manufacturers. Um, who might be able to sell you something with reasonable quantities um, directly out of China. But you need to have a very good idea of what it is you want to do. And to be honest with you, if I were starting a business from ground up, I would use, not that uh, most of your merchandise is going to come from over there, but I would use a middleman here in the States. I would use the 14th floor at the Apparel Mart or Magic to look for something new, fresh, or unique because it's just um, it's just bloody easier. I mean, just getting to Hong Kong, uh, yeah, I mean, trying to do all that stuff online is just really, really difficult. Um, a few people have been successful at it, but it's not easy. Let's move. Oh, and I'm going to do some of the same things Jerry did, okay? Again, the whole point is to try to do something unique, different, and make yourself available. Uh, so that when you have learned from Gabriella, how to do your social media, uh, and then people actually find you. When they do find you, you need to have a hook. And that hook is doing something unique. Maybe not everything has to be unique, but as we saw, you know, buying six and you know, six piece minimums and all that kind of stuff, you can't you can't do an enormous amount of the sort. It just doesn't make any sense. And that's why, again, I'll go back and confirm Jerry's point. Working in these farmer markets, pickup shops, to figure out whether or not you have what Jerry and I call the eye. Because we can't. nobody can teach you that. You've got to be born with it. And either you have it or you don't. <coughs> and maybe you ought to think about becoming a milkman instead of a, a fashion designer if you don't have the eye and the customer, no matter where you go, they all look at it, they all smile, looks nice, but nobody buys. And because not everybody can be that. I mean, it's. It's just rare. So test out your, your stuff. Doesn't mean you have to design it. Just means you have to be able to walk in and go, that will sell that one. Mm -hmm. And and a truth. And Jerry left the room. That's okay. But he'll tell you the same thing. None of us can pick the winners off. No matter who you are, you walk into Neiman Marcus, you walk into Saks, you walk into Macy's, it doesn't matter. They all have the giant sales. Because guess what? You can call the collection down to what you think of the best there is, and your customers are going to call it one more time. So, I mean, did I have some successes? You betcha. But I probably got fired a couple of times too because I did. I rolled the dice. I was wrong, and there's no room for error. Because in baseball, you're a 300 hitter, you're a superstar, and they're paying you 27 million dollars a year. In business, you got a bat somewhere between 85 and 95 percent, or you lose your job, and you're not going to make 27 million dollars. So, um, 
you're going to make some mistakes. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So I'm just showing you some of this stuff that I thought is um, looked interesting and a little bit different, so forth and so on. But I think you guys got the, uh, between the two of us, you've got, gotten the opinion to be unique, to be different, to, sh to show something that's fun. Keep going, Gabriel. Okay, terms. Everybody buys terms. Women's market is usually 8, 10, 30. That means you get an 8% discount out in 10 days or you pay net in 30. Everybody takes the 8%, nobody pays in 10 days. Um, and I think a lot of the guys now have stopped the 8, 10, it's now net 30 because they just don't, nobody, nobody was, I don't think in Macy's or anywhere, anybody uh, that I ever worked for paid the bill in 10 days. We took the discount every time, but that's because we had weight behind us. You know, we were big, Foley's, Macy's, whatever. Um, but doesn't work. Menswear is always net, net 30 or net 60. So that's enough about terms. Sorry, that's an old slide. Nobody hears brick and mortar. And to be honest with you, that is uh, very wise. I had created a line that I was going to use because Jerry asked the question, uh, and not a single person raised their hand. And I was going to suggest if somebody had raised their hand that we have a, a, a therapist that's going to uh, talk with you after class, free of charge, to get you out of brick and mortar. This requires a little bit of discussion. It's a simple, simple concept, but it is a virtual fact. Not exactly 80-20, it can be 79-20, but that 80% or actually it's reversed, 20% of your inventory generates 80% of your volume. What? Okay, sorry. 20% of your inventory generates 80% of your revenue. And it really doesn't matter whether it's Macy's, The Gap, Costco, Target, Walmart, plus or minus a couple of points, is that the major portion of your volume is coming from a very small percent of your inventory. And the problem with that is what Jerry was talking about earlier with markdowns. It's the reverse. You've now got 80% of your inventory is only producing 20% of your sales. You get it? That's a lot. And it's reality for all of us. Jerry, me, whatever. We love to believe that we never created dogs, but we did. He manufactured them, I bought them. And we didn't think they were dogs until the, retail, until the consumer declared them a dog by not buying them. They bought something else. And it's just a reality in the world. And that's why inventory, you heard Jerry say it, I'll say it again, inventory will kill you if you, if you overbuy. Stick to your plan. And I know in the beginning it's hard, that's why you should start small and then grow based on what 
the customer is telling you to do. Pay attention to what they tell you. The other side of the coin is this whole concept of markdowns. Once you've been in business just a little, a short amount of time, short amount of time, you will have things that you bought that just blow out, gone. It's like uh, fringe or psychedelic prints or whatever it is, fly out the door. So you'll understand what a winner is. And the dog, even though when you bought it, you thought it was going to be wonderful, when it got to the store or online and you photographed it, you put it up and you're ready to go, and nothing's happened. We call it a dog. And the faster you get rid of it, as Jerry said, first you go 40, then you go 50, then you go 60. Hopefully, by the time you get to 60, you're getting the vast majority of your money back, and you can go back to market and reinvest in something else. But you're going to have a significant amount of dogs. And the faster you get rid of them, and reinvest your money, the better off you are. You agree, Jerry? Perfect. Okay. I can't begin to tell you how important that is. It is the life and death of the business, is managing that inventory, and when you've got too much of it and you only have a small percentage of it being the winners and a bunch being the losers, those markdowns will kill you. You won't. The profit will go away and your cash flow sucks and you're in trouble or headed towards bankruptcy. It's as simple as that. So manage your inventory. And these things, as much as you loved them when you saw them in market, they're not your children. <laughs> you don't have to love them forever. This is business. So it's okay to go from feast to famine. You know, it was your favorite when you went to market. It was your favorite when you got it and photographed it. But the consumer says they hate it. You now hate it. And you want to get rid of it as fast as you can. Just whatever it takes to get rid of it. Got that? that? I can't begin to emphasize how much. Well, markdowns. Apparel is not like wine. It does not improve with age. You get it in and you say, oh, I'm a little early. I'm a little early. It's the color. What's that? Promote this TV show, whatever. Orange is the new black. Well, guess what? Orange has never been the new black. There's never been anything to replace black. And I don't know why they even tried to make that up, but it can't, it would sound like cute, orange is the new black. But when <laughs> orange doesn't sell, you get rid of it. If you spice it up, I don't care, bright yellow, certain, you know, jade, green, uh, fuchsia and all of that, those were my best colors in the blast, when I was a blast buyer uh, in California. But you, um, but if it doesn't sell, it's not going to get any better. That's the whole point. Shoot it and get rid of it and let it die and go away. Get your money back and go back to market and buy something that is doing well. Sometimes you can do reorders on the winners and sometimes you just have to take, take a shot in the dark. Um, Go ahead. We're, we're going to do questions and answers okay. in a minute. So j j just make sure you write it down so we know what it is. And I think I'm pretty close to my end, am I not? Yeah. That's what you want. So, but that's later on. So I think um, 
This may be the most exciting part of the whole class, okay? One, Jerry and I are a bunch of old guys. <laughs> and he's been retired 15 and I'm, I'm just now coming up on 10 years. But we, we stay pretty current. But Gabriella, she's smart. And she's young and she's with it. And she's in the not too distant future going to be a PhD. Um, and so she's going to talk to you about that most important thing is how do they find you? You created all this stuff, you've gone to the market, you've got the eye, you've got the, you're picking the right stuff. I mean, anybody been on Amazon lately? Put in uh, blouses, put in anything, 300, 400 pages of style. How are they going to find you? Even if I, you know, I want nice blouses in Houston, Texas, and on a website, and doing a Google search or whatever it is, how are they going to find you? And this is what my friend Gabby is going to talk about. A couple of uh, footnotes here. I want to introduce one of our members that's here today that if you run into technical difficulties on your website, we have the Vice President of IT of SCORE here. John Harris, could you stand up, please? John can answer about any kind of question that you have. He also, he also is available to us. Uh, I had a client that came to me who was a teacher, and she wanted to invent a software program to teach other teachers. Very sophisticated, very good. John started in with these terms like architecture and so forth in our first session. I go, John, I'm going to learn from you. I'm going to be silent, but I want to learn from you. And he's helped her all along the way to build this unbelievable program uh, that she's bringing to market this year. So we have the talent. We just have to know what you need for us to bring on board folks like John. Uh, one more thing about uh, Gabby. Uh, we are volunteers, but we also have businesses on the side, if you will. Gabby's one of those that wears two hats. She is available for hire, as you heard earlier, and I want to emphasize that. But once you become a client of SCORE, then we can no longer, we have to separate because we don't receive any remuneration. We're not even allowed to accept a cup of coffee if we meet with you at Starbucks. That's how tight we are on our code of conduct. We cannot accept anything from our clients. But she is available for hire. She's very reasonable, and as you're going to hear now, she is very good at what she does. All right? Gabby, you're on. I, I need to use this because the training is here, but I'm incredibly good at it. I'm Mexican, so I speak with my hands too. And I'm a mom, so you know. No chakras today, but. Hey, I have Mexicans here who knows I love the chakras. <laughs> okay, so. Can you hear me all? Is it okay, Bob? Well, I think I fixed that mic. Better? Better. Okay, so before. Anything happens before you go into the dollar, before you do anything else, I need you to read this. Before you buy a domain name, make this checklist. Take a screenshot, it's easier. First, do you have a wow factor and an eye catching product? You have a clear message about your brand, your story? Check. Do you know your audience? Young, old, cheap, contemporary? Check. Are you, did you like to be active in social media? Not, not that you know, did you like to be active out there in the reels and dancing? Check. Uh, you have more or less like an advertising budget of 150 to 500 a month? Check. You have enough money for at least 120 days? Check. So, if you answer no to any of these, then just stop. You stop right now and you hire these guys, you call them, you say, I need help from SCORE because there's something on my business plan that I haven't figured out yet and 
it is our duty and our responsibility for you not to waste money or time or do something wrong in business. So if you say not do any of these, just hold your thoughts and call us and we schedule a meeting with us and that's it. Okay? But if you have said yes to any of these, that's the point. Okay. Online businesses have two sides. I'm going to talk about the dark side and the cool side. Okay. The one that no one likes but I love are the behind the scenes, the BTS. One, the website builder with the e-commerce capabilities. You need to have one of those. You need to have all your pricing, your products, your images, everything in order. Now, uh, you also need to have all your shipping options, things that you don't think about until you are actually getting your inside a computer and try to help it. Who am I going to choose? UPS, USPS, FedEx, and I'm going to be just local and I'm going to use Instacart, Corsair, what, what I'm going to do. So those should be also are very important. Uh, the delivery time, now with the latest privacy policies, you do need to have privacy policies on your websites. How are you going to collect data? What are you going to do with that data? And who are you going to share that data with? So that is very important for your website to run. If you don't have a privacy policy already on your website, Google will say, uh, not today. I'm not going to rank you because you are not complying with one of my many things that you need to have in order for me to say you can appear in Google. Okay? And the last one, FAQs. All the frequently asked questions that you might think your customer is going to ask for you, you need to have it before even setting up the e-commerce shop. Why am I saying even before? Because once you get into it, you are so excited and you are doing so many things at the same time, you're multitasking, that you're going to forget. And you're just going to delay the process of going live. So if you have everything old school, paper, just writing down in your Word or your Google Slide, whatever, the moment that you put on your eShop, you just pull it in, copy paste, easy. Okay. Uh, later on, on the behind the scenes is also I would recommend for you to match your brand, whatever you're going to do, with your domain name. It's easier for you and for Google to find you instead of having, for example, um, modern cheap from Texas.com because that's what you're going to sell, but your brand was or is a uh, Houstonian one. It, it doesn't match. So because you couldn't find Houstonian one, you went to the other one. And then Google will say, what are you selling? Okay. So you really need to try to match your brand, your company link, your brand with your domain name. It's easier. Not impossible to rank or to get found on Google without it because that's why we have taglines, but it is easier if you can match both of them. Uh, it had to be short, clear, and catchy instead of fun, fantastic, and what was the next one? Functional. Functional. So this one is short, clear, and catchy. That's your domain name. It's easy to remember. Uh, then you have to, in the back, behind the scene, you have to set up your storefront, all the testing, and check out process. This is e commerce is about testing before going out. Testing, testing, testing. If the link works, if, if it doesn't have a 404, 404 means it doesn't appear the, the, the web page. The checkout that you put a dollar, you check that all the transaction went through, is smooth, your email of yes, you, you just purchased something, it's already there. Because the worst thing that can happen to you guys is that you put all this effort and somebody finally gets into your uh, store and the checkout process is a mess. So you have to test before like seven times with different friends, different cards, if you can, so you can make sure that everything is smooth. Okay, that is very important. And the last one, for those who that I love, make sure you have something that is called a meta description, which is how Google and Bing and Yahoo and Baidu find you. That's how the search engines work. If you don't have that on your website, on your eShop, no matter how much effort you put into it, when you are that out there and you're only you're paying a lot of money in ads, and believe me, I don't like paying money in ads, and I don't like paying money in many things. So uh, you need to have that meta description. 
Okay? So that is behind the scenes of your online business. You see? Like 10 steps that you need to have in order besides choosing for clothes, going to Dallas, looking at what are you going to do. So this is a technical part. Mm -hmm. Now, the light part or the fun part that everybody gets into is the part of the social media or the digital marketing. The first thing you have to do is to set up a business profile, not your personal profile, because when you get into Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, uh, or any of those, they're going to tell you, oh, you're doing business. So since you're doing business and you're doing a personal profile, I'm going to find you. So you're not going to have an account anymore. So what you need to do is to have a business uh, profile. It is very simple. Uh, you just put your name, which has to be your brand, your bio, who are you selling to, what is your audience, and what is going to sell fun and different from anybody else, and you just put it in your bio, and you just put, click on your account that you are a business account. It is very simple to do. Also, in social media, research your competition. Go on the search bar on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, whatever your audience is, uh, hanging out, you check out, for example, let's go with country chick. Country chick blouses. Yes. And you will have a ton of other brands next to you or similar to you, who, what you want to sell, uh, that are country chick uh, tops. And then you're going to see what are they posting, who is, uh, who are they buying, who, who are the audience, who are interacting with them, what kind of stories, content uh, are they posting, and you're just going to learn from them and say, hey, I can do that, or no, my audience will never do that, I will never dance like that, or, you know something, they're doing something so cool, they don't even appear in front of the camera, and I'm one of those, I don't like to appear, so let's do that. Or you are very ultra and very uh, loving on the camera, and you're like, yeah, I'm going to model, I'm going to do that, so perfect. So check out your competition. Uh, also, look at trends that fit your business on social media. Not every trend in TikTok and not every trend in Reels or Snapchat fits your uh, brand. Because if you are a more like Missy, as Jerry said, you are not going to have a trendy uh, music that has nothing to do with your brand and vice versa. So you have to look at what trends are going to fit your brand. For example, we have for all designers, one person who went to the male uh, designs. So maybe that trend, the trends that are right now in fashion are so um, feminine and music. So you really maybe you will go to hip hop, or maybe you will go to other kind of music that are uh, different. Okay, so you really need to know what trends are out there that can fit my business. That's the most important thing to have. Also. Uh, for prepare a social media calendar, that is one of the main things that I always ask. You have a calendar. Look at the month ago, months ahead, and you can include your behind the scenes. Your journey of entrepreneurship as a, as a fashion boutique is extremely important. You make an engagement with your audience. They're going to say, hey, I love these guys because they actually are making everything for me. Look at how cool they are selecting. They, are, they went all the way down to Dallas or maybe Las Vegas. They're having so much fun and they're taking the time to choose something that I actually going to buy. So you are sharing that with your customer, your potential customer, and they love that, and that's engagement that you want to share. Uh, also, the coming soon and the grand opening. Those are topics that you sh should include in your calendar, in your social media calendar. Why? Because you are warming up those leads, the famous leads that you want to have, you're warming them up, you're, you're making that suspense, you're making them tell them, oh, wow, like the, um, the fashion uh, runway, and I don't know to say, in Paris, they put like three months before all these advertisements in social media, that by the time it is, I already know the collection, <laughs> okay, and I'm just drooling over there, I wish you agree with them, but I couldn't, you know. So now, the last in social media, you have to set realistic goals. And by goals means, uh, do you want followers? Do you want web traffic? Do you want people engaging in your content or sharing your content? Those are realistic goals that you need to know. It is not about just posting what you just did. It is about what is the result you want from that post. For example, uh, we have a lot of young 
audience here right now that they are way more tech savvy on the reels and the TikToks than I than, as I was sharing with you. And it is not only about posting something fun because we are competing with a cute little kitty, with a little kitty puppy, the one who is jump, bungee jump off a bridge. And you're like a brand. Well, how am I going to compete in my fashion game with a guy who's getting millions of uh, views and engagement by bungee jump? I'm not going to do that. Or the kitty cat that is so cute. And I can spend hours looking at the kitty cat. But it has nothing to do with my business. So what are you going to do with your business? You have to be very creative to see what are the trends, maybe with a kitty cat, that can do something with your business. Okay, that is so important. Okay, you have to create your schedule and your content. You have to optimize your social. And optimize your social means that as we are talking about the meta descriptions on your web page, you're also going to have meta descriptions or keywords or hashtags on your social media content. And hashtags not only about Instagram or um, uh, mo uh, motivation, which those are very general, but you're going to go all the way down to what you want to sell and your audience. Going ahead, mother, uh, chick, western. You just put hashtag chick, western, or western chick, or mother. And people who is looking for that specific thing, you just go directly to you. And you did absolutely nothing but to think on your audience. And that is the importance of optimizing your social and optimizing your calendar. If you don't have those two together, you're just posting for fun and you're not going to have. A result, and then you're going to be saying, I feel like a hamster on a spinning wheel and I'm getting nowhere. Okay? So that's important. And the other one is in your social, you have to optimize your website also because your social media is the one that drives traffic to your website. Yes, you can have shops on Instagram and there are links on TikTok too, or everything. We're going to talk about it. Okay? But the most important thing is that. The website, you own your data on your website, not on social media. Social media, one day will say, do you know something? Jerry's profile, I don't like it anymore because he's just, I don't like it. How many back him? No more. Jerry doesn't have social media anymore. Your shop is done and you never collected an email. What are you going to do? You are working on lease land, okay? You need to own your data, and the only way to do that is through a website. So, you send them from your social media to your website. And the last thing is, this. social media helps you to prepare your ads. How is that? You are going viral, okay? That viral post, engagement, reel, whatever, is going to tell you something because you're going to have engagement. And that engagement is going to tell you exactly what your audience is looking for what is clicking on them with you, and that is how you're going to make your ads. You're not going to discover something new. You already know what your audience want, what they are looking for, and so you're going to make your ads based on that. So you're not going to waste money. Why? Because you already know that that is what they want. So you're going to invest very few, it's a very small budget, you will have a large impact. That's what you want. Remember the 80 20 that they were talking about? We're going to do the same. We're going to focus on what works so I can have more impact and more benefits. Okay, okay e commerce. This is one of the main questions that we will get at SCORE. What would be the best e commerce platform for us as an online fashion boutique? Mm -hmm. These are my favorites Shopify by far. It has integration with. Um, every single social media space, specifically Instagram. And if you're going to fashion, there's no better outlet out there than Instagram right now. Okay, fashion equals Instagram. That's it. I, I cannot say more. Okay, but we also have Wix, we also have Squarespace and GoDaddy. From order of personal, and because I, I know them all, is Shopify, then Wix, then Square, and then GoDaddy. Why? Because they are so easy to do. You can do everything by yourself on a simple grant that costs less than thirty dollars a month, and you have a website, and it's professional, and it's beautiful. So you can skip a lot of website development costs and put it into your inventory, put it into your advertising. You can do a lot by doing this. 
Okay? So go and get, check it out, browse, look at what they offer. Make sure you plan carefully because each one of them has different things. Okay, why don't you need to look at a website? First, it has to be customer friendly. Mm -hmm. And by customer friendly, I mean It needs to have a clear message that has to connect with your target audience, as uh, Jerry was saying. It has to tell you what they do best and what makes you stand out from the crowd. I chose Gap, not because I love Gap, but also because it says good jeans, good teeth, and good for all Gap for good. We are now living in an era of cons uh, consumer consciousness. They are very conscious of where they buy, what they are looking into, and what are the values of a brand. So Gap puts everything together. Mm -hmm. Also, you need to know uh, that it has to be a responsive layout. 70% uh, of online shopping is done with the phone. So you make a very nice website on your desktop, and when you go to, to the phone, I don't know if that happens to you, you're just like pinching everything because you can't see a thing. So that is important. You have to think mobile first when you're doing your website, okay? And the one wonderful thing is that Shopify, Wix, which I know, uh, they all have mobile first. You go there, they are optimized for mobile phones and tablets. So that is a good thing. Although, it has to be social media friendly. They need to have integration with social media. If you need to have a plugin or to put a pixel, well, pixel to the, you need to have it because of the app. But if you need to have a plugin to integrate your social media into your website, move away from that platform because you're just going to have a headache. Okay, so just to do that. And also, when you connect both of them, one of the things I say it says, shut down. That's a screenshot from Francesca's Facebook. She sells directly from Facebook page. Who will think about it? Right? She does. You do. Francesca sells directly from Facebook. You don't even need to go to their website. You just there. Mm -hmm. And my specialty part is SEO friendly. You need to have a way to put your meta description and that the website is SEO friendly. Why? Because you are not going to get found anywhere if you don't have those keywords. If you don't have those titles, if you don't have those headings, that all these um, beautiful spider scrollers are going to look and say, hey, I have country chief western here, and they are the best. Mm -hmm. I put this example. For example, that is a white embroidered top. You can put a uh, flower, embroider, gloss, top. Those are the numbers of hits of each of the keywords. But if you go for embroidered top for seven, Nine seven, only seven nine seven hits. But if you are selling that, the, the person who is looking for an embroider top, their yours is going to rank higher than if you only put embroider or top or gauze or. So you have to put longer keywords, like so you can have more direct uh, targets and you have better results because. Uh, uh, there are not 18,000 online stores, there are 9.1 million stores globally as of this year. I just look it out and Google. Uh, 9.1 million. That is your competition. 9.1 million guys. So you have to pay attention to how are you going to get found on the internet and in social media. Okay. So the best platform with e commerce integration by far, as I told you once, Instagram. Okay. Instagram it is all about showcasing a product or service. It's about visual storytelling and retail. Okay. And I'm going to emphasize the storytelling. Instagram is all about you telling a story, you engaging with your audience in little snippets and shorts, but you have to tell a story about what is happening. That's what they love. Facebook on the other side. It's a, uh, sorry, Pinterest is about sharing products, how to do it yourself, tutorials. Pinterest is amazing for e-commerce too. Why? Because a pin lasts three months life, as I call it, shelf life. You put a pin, and that pin is still for three months on, contrary to Instagram that lasts 24 hours. Okay, so choose your channels, guys. And the next one is Facebook. 
Okay, Facebook is about loyalty. They have shops, they have a lot of things, and you can buy directly from on Facebook. However, the, the, the connection between Facebook users and the shops is more about customer service, the same as Twitter. Mm -hmm. And the last but not least, we have TikTok. TikTok is right now growing exponentially, and the reason of that is not because of the easiest way it is so fun to, to have the videos. They have included the link for your shop and your website, and they're creating some other uh, things for shopping on TikTok already. So I do believe they're going to uh, include shops in the near future for TikTok too. So that is an avenue you should be worth to look for you if you are into the Generation Z kind of audience, the younger audience. So if you're going to sell to 20s and down, TikTok is your platform, okay? Maybe 25 and down. Okay. Screenshot dates. This is my bonus of the, one of the bonuses of the day. Screenshot. This is how are you going to have an email list? I don't have anybody. I, I don't know anything. I'm just a starting. Okay, super tip. You use your friends, families, and every single one in that contact list on your phone and you send an email. I made a little template that is actually is the one that we do, I use with my clients. And that one is an eye opener and it grows fast. You say, hi, I'm doing this. And uh, I, I know I haven't been around because how many contacts we have that we don't even use anymore, All right? I know I haven't been around lately, but I'm getting ready to launch my fashion boutique name. And I am so excited. You can look for how you talk. Uh, the new collection is all about, and this is your message, your brand point, your what are you going to be different about, okay? And here's a sneak peek of the collection. It's up your website. You're already connecting your brand, your message to a website. And then, if you want to know more about my shenanigans, sit in the boutique, check out my Instagram at my shenanigans, okay? So, or oh, whatever your profile is. Mm -hmm. Let me know your thoughts, Gabby. Yes. Can you do me a favor? Please share this email with someone else, okay? And uh, the more the merrier. This is how you grow your list. And you're doing it when? To the moment you say, I'm ready to launch. Even if you are going to have a coming soon on your website, it doesn't matter. As long as you have a social media profile that you're starting to document your journey as an entrepreneur, as a future fashion business mogul, you do this. Why? Because what you need is to grow that list and tell everybody to share your story. And the only way to do that is by being social, by connecting to little aunt in Arkansas that I haven't seen since I was two. Well, it doesn't matter. She might remember me still. So you do that. And that's how you to grow your list. And this is where we map. These are referrals. Yeah. This is how we network digitally by telling people what we're doing. OK? And then on the other side is your is, uh, inside the email. You put good things are coming, your t-shirts or any what you do, the product, the product the title, the whatever. And then we have three goals on this in with this email. First, grow your email list. Second, grow your followers, and then is branding. Okay, you don't have to pay any branding agency to do this. Okay, this is for free from score mentors, okay? There you are. Now, we're getting to promoting the store using social media. These are the best social media channels that every small business should have. Okay? This is a brick and mortar, so I use it for others. So, first, for branding and advertising, we have Snapchat, TikTok, and Instagram, according to your uh, audience. For customer service, we have Twitter. Why? Because it's fast and you literally answer at that precise moment and you just go back. Uh -huh. For tutorial guides and how to videos on long format, we have YouTube and Pinterest. We have online orders and delivery at WhatsApp. And for, uh, we have a very, the WhatsApp is part of the meta network. So 
one of the things they say that if you want to have an ad also on WhatsApp, they can do it. So just consider it if that what you can do. We have Facebook, of course, and also we have food traffic and reviews. If I know you're not going to have a brick and mortar, however, if you have a brick and mortar, Google, Business, and Joe are the ones who help you with food traffic. Do you keep going into your store? Okay. And reviews. The power of a review. The power of a review is five times better than a call, call or an ad because people are just going to be actually reading what your customers are saying about you. And that is priceless. Mm -hmm. Our clients get more uh, traffic and sales by people saying, wow, this person is absolutely amazing on what they do. The customer service is this, the, the specific of is this splendid, splendid, Okay, splendid, let's go with splendid. Splendid and uh, exceptional, I was going to say. And I'm boring you, Jerry, you're John. I know you have, you, we commented together so many times that he already knows everything what I'm going to say. Sorry to put you on the spot. So, reviews. It is better to have a review than not having reviews, okay? That's how you sell more. Okay, we also have to promote the story with paid influencer marketing. For every dollar you spend on influencer marketing, your losses can make up to five times. Why? Because they have their audience that you're looking for. They already have the numbers that you're looking for. And if you try to wait until you have the 3,000, 5,000, 10,000 followers that are actually engaged with that account, you're never going to have out of business. So we're going to use the influencers for your brand to go out. So there are very good marketplaces where you can find good influencers that are better, that they have real numbers, not they are not just going to put a post and never engage with it. They are going to be actively looking for engagement for your product. Okay, so that is important. We have I put a pink line over there, one from small influencers that are ten thousand and under, and you are going to larger influencers ten and up all the way to celebrities. I want you to start looking at the nano influencers because they have the highest engagement. They are the ones who are really looking forward to become the next Kylie Jenner. So they're going to do everything in their power for your product to be out there, to be engaged, to have the best ratings. And why? Because they are also inside the marketplace, an influencer marketplace, and the best reviews, the best high engagement, they can charge later better. So their whole point is for them to give you a very good uh, engagement rate. But if you go to uh, a smaller influencer with 10,000 that they handle about 75 brands, okay, if you're just starting, you need all the effort with you, not out of focus. So I will go first with nano and micro influencers, and as you grow up and you have more money, because they always cost more money, you go with small influencers, okay? Yeah. Okay, super tips. Screenshot again. How to make your first sale online? You don't even have a website yet. It's coming soon. You don't even do anything. So, first thing, as I said, to blast your email to all your contacts. Number two, you gave them a pre launch discount to all your subscriber list. Okay, you really need to have that email already automated. You say thank you, and just because they sign up, you give them a pre launch discount. Do you know the discounts? Oh, ten minutes, okay, show it one. And then, third, you create a giveaway on social media to the first 50 tags. Why do you need 50 tags? Because you want to have your brand out there. You need more people to know. So you give them that. And then, fourth, you set a pop up coupon on your website for the visitors who says pre order now. If you have that, you make it already your first sale and you are not even open. Okay? So that is the importance of having all this strategy behind and not just posting just because it's fun. Yeah. Okay. Now there are four ways to promote your online boutique like a pro. First, and the one I love the most, yes, screenshot that. Organic marketing. As Jerry said, I don't like to 
pay for things. I don't buy things that are regular price. I'm your worst customer, let me talk. I will wait until your <laughs> things are on sale so I can buy them. Yes, I'm there. Uh, but guess what? I'm not the only one. Everybody is the same. So the first thing you need to do is organic marketing. Think about it. Blogging, blogging, SEO, email list, social media, videos. That's how you're going to get your marketing outside first. Mm -hmm. Second, collaboration industry experts, influencers of online magazines. And by collaboration techniques, look at you around here. Maybe you are country chief. Maybe you are doing purses. Maybe you are doing hats. Why the three of you get together and you pull that very nice thing and you're not pulling out business from each other. You are giving a solution to your customer because I love your dog and I love your hat and I love your purse. <sighs> Did I have to go everywhere to find that? I have one single video that gives me the three stores. I will go to you guys. Okay? That's what the power of collaboration and adding up means. Okay? Social media is about being social. So if you have collaboration with a blogger, you have collaboration with a, maybe a student here at HCC that does videos, you collaborate with them and you have, that's how you help each other. And helping each other means that we're going to have goodness coming back. Okay? Now, traditional. They actually work. You can put stickers wherever you go with QR codes and with your blog, and they will say, Oh, that's a very nice sticker. Let me see what it is about. And they go. Traditional flyers, uh, postal, billboards, newspaper, local magazine. Every local magazine and newspaper have an online version. So you got a link, you just go there. Okay? Uh, and of course, pay that. And we're going to go there right now. No, it's not there. Okay. Pay that. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Pinterest, and the influencers. We already talked about the influencers, but they, those are maybe what you're going to be looking when you're looking at uh, considering ads for your fashion boutique. Those are the top things that you're going to be looking at. Okay, so this is the social media marketing uh, stuff. I'm going to be on that side because that's it. Okay, this is the famous Topo Mofu Bofu. And this one, Asian PC. Topo is the top of the funnel, is where you are all right now. Awareness and interest of the top of the funnel. Everybody stays there like a side. I'm so sorry, I moved. <laughs> you just stay there, okay? Everybody just posting there, and they need to know, everybody of you need to know that that is your brand awareness. Your goal is to connect with potential customers and motivate, motivate them to take an action. What are you going to measure here? The number of followers and the engagement and the signups. And then you go to the second part of the, of the sales funnel, okay, which is the middle of the funnel, the muffle, which is you need to have that list building and list generation. You need to generate those leads and warming them up from yeah, I like the website, but I'm not sure. To okay, I'm going to consider you, and I'm going to bookmark or save your post here, so I can actually come back and don't, don't get lost. Because remember, 9.1 million online stores out there, so you need them to bookmark your store, not everybody else's. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to check out your metrics: um, the click-through rate, the website traffic, the open rate, the attendance through seminars or webinars. If you're going to do a webinar, oh, I look, I look. Okay, I did it won't. Uh, webinars on fashion. A fashion boutique doing webinars on how to use for tutorials on their clothes. Okay, you have seven clothes, you have these, and they were just putting how many ways you can wear a white shirt. It is impressive, over 35 ways of wearing a, a shirt. Under the blouse, on top of the blouse, on the pants, as a skirt, that was impressive. Okay, middle of them. You're going to direct them on making a decision. And then you're going to give them the confidence to purchase from you. How are you going to do that? Not only by engaging with them, but also by what you're offering them. The quality, the free shipping, the coupon, the discount, whatever it is. You have to make them trust you. Your website needs to be secure. Your website uh, or the Shopify store uh, will need to have uh, the review saying that hey, that's so cool, or people that maybe they are not buying from you yet, but they are saying, 
their customer service, every time I ask about something, they are there for me. They are answering everything. So that is also good. Okay? And that's how they are going to buy from you, by building that trust. The number one problem that I face with all our clients is that they want to jump from the tofu to the buffalo, and they forget about the middle part. Okay? They forget about their leads. They, they forget about nurturing your client. You need to build that bridge. Okay? Unless you are just buying for cheap stuff that is such a good deal that you cannot miss, then just keep the middle one. And even then, they are going to ask for another discount. Okay? So this is important for you to know. Nurture your leads. Take care of your customer. And they will buy from, buy from you. Okay, another secret, screenshot, screenshot moment. Okay, five secrets to build your online boutique for free. Okay, this is for free. You don't need to pay ads. It takes time, it takes effort, creativity, but it's free. One, as I said, get products reviews from your customers, from your, even your aunt that she never said. Send it a blouse and say, hey, wear it for me. How did you? Tell me about the process, aunt. Okay? And believe me, or your abuelita, your grandma will say, oh, Mita, let me tell you that I didn't like it. And you take notice about that. Okay? Because if your family didn't like something and they were brave enough to tell you, they're giving you the heads up. And they're giving and making you a favor by telling you that. So you can fix things before going out. Okay? First, reviews from your clients and post it. Uh, get included in gift guides. This is collaborating with bloggers, okay? There are a lot of bloggers that they do gift guides. The best gift for Mother's Day. The best gift guide for fill in the blank. You get in those gift guides and your store will rise. Find the brand ambassador. Not the creepy crawlers from Instagram that you get all the times in DMs and, oh, I like to look at your social profile. Can you be my brand ambassador? No. You'll really look at a nano influencer or someone in your network that has 3,000, 5,000, 7,000 people, uh, followers. They're students, my teenage kids. They have friends that they have 10,000 followers. And I'm like, how did they do that? Right? 10,000 followers were like, wow, and they put about whatever, and they're very fashionable. So you can say, hey, can you do me a favor? Can you talk with your followers, which is my niche, about this blouse? Yeah, sure, I can be the brand ambassador. It's for free. And it's a friend, or it's someone that you know, but you can collaborate. That's how you do it. Okay, Richard, go. Get found in Google search. That means SEO, meta descriptions, your hashtags it works on social media and it works on websites whatever you put on your meta descriptions on your products works on any social media and on your website so that's how you get found on google bing don't say no to bing it has like 20 percent of the market and yahoo another 10 percent so 30 percent is out there not on google so pay attention to those two guys okay and also, first, focus on one platform at a time. If you use Instagram, you post immediately to Facebook. You might want to do, because of your audience, you might want to do maybe Instagram and TikTok, or maybe Instagram and Pinterest, or maybe Instagram and maybe you're a blogger, fashion online boutique with YouTube, something like that, which is very complicated. But I will go with Instagram, Facebook, or uh, TikTok or Pinterest, okay? But choose one at a time. Once you start doing all the content, you're going to say, Bobby, you were right, one at a time, okay? Because it's exhausting. Okay, now we're going to pay that. I put it from easy to hard. The easiest one, Instagram. You look at your insights, little corner, little button in the middle, look at your, which one is the best post, the more engaged, you just say, yes, the sponsor, let's pay for it. Uh, you control the budget. You don't do anything else. Instagram does almost everything. You have to twitch a little bit, and that's it. Facebook is a little more tricky. That is a second. 
you need to go to the Facebook ad manager and you start twitching maybe a video, maybe a carousel, maybe I'm going to play with the audiences, maybe I'm not going to be only on my own audience, maybe I just want to focus on Houston. Maybe I so it gets tricky, so but it's, it's, it's very affordable. Okay? Then we go to TikTok, which is new. And then we go to the model of all ads, Google. And that's where the black box is in. You have no idea how they do it, but they put you everywhere for their expensive. Because every time someone looks at your ad on your phone and by mistake they click it, because it happens, you get charged. Okay? You get charged on your credit card because someone clicked it, even though they didn't mean to. And you didn't even get that button. That's it. So just carry with that. Another one, free resources. These are, as I said, I don't like to pay for things. So if you want to get the best tutorials, you go with the people who invented the social media. They have an academy, Facebook Business Learning, the YouTube Creators, they have Instagram for Business, Twitter Flight School, Google Analytics Academy, the TikTok Business Learning Center. You go there, they have everything, and it's for free. And you can rewatch it as many times as needed, so you can learn the ins and outs. And it's for free. You don't have to, to go to anywhere else. They, they know everything. Now, they go content creation, design. Canva, my favorite, number one. You can do everything on Canva. Uh, it's beautiful, easy to do. You also have PicMonkey. You have Adobe Spark, the free version. And then you have the social media manager scheduler. All these plans are for free. Later, plan only. And Lovely, Facebook has a scheduled calendar which only works for Facebook and Instagram. You don't need to do anything else. Kind of easy, kind of not that good, but it's for free. So it's good. And on email marketing, MailChimp has the first 2,000 email accounts for free. So if you have less than 2,000, you can be free forever. One topic on emails is you have to go and look at how many people are, are uh, open. And if there are people that they never uh, open your your newsletter or the coupon or whatever, kick it out. You don't want them. If they, they're just taking space out of your email account, give it more room so people can actually be there. And you don't pay. So that's important. Okay? You clean up your emails. Mailerlight.com, I'm coming, I'm almost. Uh, only send and read online courses if you are going to be a fashionista also and you put it even more and you want to give online classes on. We have seller, portfolio, scientific, and webinars. All of that. Okay, almost. Thank you. And screenshot, that's me. So that's my current code, that's my commercial, and that's how you can find me. Everything that is SEO for free, they're well, not for free, but almost affordable, very cool. That's me. Okay? And, oh! I made it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Gabby. Oh my God. A lot to cover in uh, 40 minutes. Yeah. Oh, I've got things. I'm so sorry. You're great. You're no wrong. Uh, Robbie has a quick announcement to make some handouts, and if you want to do our panel discussion, if my panel can come forward with the chair, please. All right, so you made it this far. Congratulations, because I'm going to tell you two different events where. One event, you can learn to take your physical drawings and digitize them. Put them onto a, either a Fusion 360 or Maya or AutoCAD and can, you know, use those uh, digital files uh, to help you uh, print multiple prototypes in our fabrication lab at HCC. Uh, you may or may not know, but we have access, you as students or you as uh, community members have access to our fabrication labs where we have nearly $600,000 worth of equipment uh, that you can use to build your prototype. So we have an event called the Designathon uh, on April 22nd and 23rd. Uh, 23rd, it'll be a full day where you can come in to our Stafford campus, experience the fabrication lab, and, and uh, there'll be people who know how to use the equipment to help you. So if you're doing something, let's say vinyl cutting, and you wanted to make t-shirts with cool graphics on them, well, we have that equipment. We can help you sketch it. We have laser cutters as well as vinyl cutters uh, and the Cricut, if you know the, the, the new uh, equipment. We have this. It's free for you to come in and actually use. Uh, I'll answer your question. 
Uh, but it, it is a free event, so check out this flyer. Sorry, I only have one, so take a photo and pass it. And register for this and show up. It's, uh, again, all day Saturday on April 23rd. And then, if you are a student uh, or your business is uh, already kind of a little bit established, we will have a student business expo. Come and showcase your products uh, as a vendor event at, on May 21st at the West Loop campus in the auditorium. So this is the West Loop campus, the auditorium, where our capacity is 600 people. And our goal is to celebrate students and entrepreneurs uh, who want to showcase their products and that they will have a pitch competition, kind of like a Shark Tank, where we're giving out $2,000 in seed capital thanks to the McNair Centers um, who's don you know, who's, who sponsored the pitch competition with us. So every semester we have this pitch competition. And earlier I shared, uh, Houston Chronicle recently uh, did an uh, article on one of our uh, fashion students, Luisa Nataraja, and she pitched uh, at the competition she uh, not only won uh, our HCC competition, she went on with that uh, business plan at uh, University of St. Thomas, won another uh, uh, cash prize, and uh, I think it was in the range of $5,000. So uh, he just gave you the map for how you can take $3,000. The school's telling you how you can get some of the seed funding through these competitions. So I encourage all of you to check out both of these events. They're free. Uh, for students, if you're not a student, it's very easy to register for a continuing education class uh, or just register for any of our programs. And all of these uh, resources are, are available uh, to you, uh, whether it be the pitch competition or the hackathon. We call it the designathon or student hackathon because we really uh, you know, help you get those digital skills and um, get to a rapid prototype and get, you know, print something physical using all the uh, cool equipment we have. So I'll, uh, I'll, 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 I'll start there and just take a picture and share. And the last thing is um, I do have this piece of paper that I'd love for all of you to sign as you're leaving out. It allows us to say if any of our photos has you and you're OK, we'll use it for promoting future events at the college. So it's really a photo release. Uh, do sign this uh, on your way. If you're concerned about you know, your photo uh, being in any of the photos, reach out to me. Uh, and then we'll blow your photo out, right? Something as simple as that. Uh, but do sign this because it uh, allows us to have plenty of copies for this one. And uh, as Gabby said and so many others, network with one another. Um, you, go, you have no idea how powerful that is. So take the mentoring from SCORE, but the network amongst the peers that are uh, in the audience. Uh, show up at these events and uh, you know, really jumpstart your entrepreneurial journey. Uh, with us uh, in Houston. So thank you for the another uh, shameless plug. <laughs> uh, but thank you so much. And uh, again, I'm going to share this and would love for you to fill this out on your way out. Uh, and then we'll take the panel questions. And I can also answer any questions about any of these events after the panel question. OK? Thank you. Thank you. Please, we will take a minute while we set up for the panel discussion and complete your form, uh, especially regarding uh, anything specific you want to mention that you might be taking No, I'll be here for a while.
Some of these were not addressed during our presentation, so this is going to be new information for you. Uh, I'm going to start out with this one. Japan the design or not? For your information, we have to have one of our 200 mentors who is a lawyer that does patent and trademark work. It is available free, but it costs a lot of money. And 